Hello and welcome to Research Matters Podcasts. Today I, Aishwarya Vishwamitra, will give you a summary of science stories that were published during the week on Research Matters. In your weekly dose of Indian science news today, I cover stories on agriculture, ecology and health. You may remember discussing the success story that is the gear lion population. Having soared from a handful to 600 in the last two centuries, the gear lion really is the king of its jungle. Turns out, gear also has a sizable number of Indian leopards. Two big cats in a small area? Seems like a recipe for bad news. However, these two species coexist without much competition for survival. How? A recent study by researchers at the Aligarh Muslim University answers this. The gear lion and the Indian leopard are both predators. Therefore, they have similar diets. They can only coexist if there is a spatial or temporal partitioning of resources between them. Let's break that down. Being active at different times of the day is temporal partitioning, and sharing different habits is spatial partitioning. By using camera traps, the researchers found that both lions and leopards were nocturnal animals indicating that there was no significant temporal partitioning. However, there was a considerable difference in the types of habitats they preferred. Lions were mostly found in open and dense habitats, while leopards preferred dense habitats and avoided open habitats. Thus, dense habitats create a good cover, thus reducing the encounters between leopards and lions. The researchers note that habitat preference may not be the sole reason for coexistence, and caution that any change in the future could disrupt this balance. Moving on to the literal sense of balance, the cerebellum in our brains is responsible for controlling movement and balance. Thus, the loss of neurons from this area and the spinal cord results in the lack of ability to coordinate voluntary movements, even lifting your hand to wave. This genetic disorder is called spinocerebral ataxia. How do neurons alter themselves to survive this? Researchers from the Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science, Kolkata, Indian Institute of Science Education and Research, Pune, and Indian Institute of Technology, Gandhinagar, found that neurons get rid of their energy-producing machinery in an effort to survive. Let's back up. There is DNA in all our cells, including neurons. They are stored in a coiled state and hold the recipe to make proteins. In order to make proteins, they have to be uncoiled. The DNA has to be cut. And this job is done by an enzyme called topoisomerase 1. Topoisomerase binds to the DNA and cuts it. The cutting allows it to unwind, after which the topoisomerase is removed by another enzyme, TDP. The DNA can then heal and recoils. If the TDP enzyme is faulty, the DNA cannot heal and cell death is triggered. With me so far? Good. Mitochondria are energy-producing powerhouses required by the cell, and they have their own DNA as well. The same mechanism of topoisomerase and TDP is followed here too. The researchers found that in patients with spinocerebral ataxia, the TDP was faulty, and thus the mitochondrial DNA was damaged. Ideally, this would trigger cell death. However, in order to prevent this, the mitochondria divide into two, passing on the damaged DNA into one and new functioning DNA into the other. The damaged mitochondria is destroyed by the cell and the functioning one remains. Thus, the cell doesn't die and a functioning mitochondria is retained. And that is how neurons alter themselves to survive spinocerebral ataxia. Moving on to a different problem. When the salt content in the soil increases, plants respond by absorbing less water. How then do we help agriculturally vital crops cope with high salinity? A new study by researchers from various institutes in Bengaluru has found an interesting relationship between prawns, rice plants and microbes in parts of coastal Kerala. The local variety of rice grows in salty water by deriving nutrition from the excrements of the prawns. After the rice grains are harvested, baby prawns feed on the leftovers. So where do the microbes figure in? A unique mix of bacteria and fungi called endophytes grow in the rice plant and confer salt tolerance to it by altering gene expression. Essentially, 
these microbes cause the plant to overexpress salt tolerance genes thus making the plant a salt tolerant crop can we use this on agriculturally important crops treating seeds with endophytes can be easily done at the farm level say the researchers and they are experimenting with plants like capsicum and maize next thank you for listening to this episode of research matters podcasts see you next weekend for more such podcasts and science news please log on to www.researchmatters.in